Hi, John Morgan here with Bob's Market at Greenhouses, and welcome to this week's episode of Bob's Live, our weekly show right here on the internet. And well, last week we relaunched Bob's Live, and I said we would be doing a show every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Well, this isn't Tuesday. So, I've got a good reason. Uh, tomorrow I have a medical thing that I can't move the date of. So, we're doing it a day early this week. But uh, this week's episode, it kind of ties in with the previous episode because I'm actually using something from that episode. Um, in last week's episode, we planted a fiddle leaf fig. And I mentioned in the video that I was going to put rocks around the top of the fiddle leaf fig. Um, on top of the soil, you know, to kind of dress it up a little bit. And, well, I ended up with an empty container that the rocks came in. I looked at it and thought, gee, this will make it a great project. So, let's jump right into it and take a look at what I did with that little container. Alright, so I am sitting here on the floor in my office with the fiddle leaf fig that we transplanted in the last video. And since I transplanted it, I added these cool stones around the base. And they came in a package like this. And well, I ended up with an empty one. And when I look at this, I don't see trash. I see an experiment. I think I can make a little terrarium in this, and even though it's kind of scratched up, it'd still be a fun experiment. So where can I get the stuff for my terrarium? Well, just outside my office window. All right, so people driving by probably think I'm crazy, but got some scrap paper here. And this moss looks really good. So I'm going to collect some of it. And that should easily be enough. Even got a little plant here. And I think I can rustle up some growing media of some sort, but this ought to be enough. Ooh, let's get some little stones. Some little decorative stones. I found this little stick here. That might make it interesting. And yeah, I think that's good. All right, so I just ran next door and literally like picked up off the dirt room floor some hydrofiber and a little bit of peat moss. And I think that's going to be great as a medium for my little uh, homebrew terrarium here. So let's go ahead and start assembling this thing. And I'm also going to use in the bottom of it some of these leftover stones that I have. So that'll act as my, uh, my water basin in the bottom. So there's our stones. The one thing that I don't have is something like a screen to put in. But that's where the hydrofiber comes in. I think it'll make a great little screen. <laughs> okay. And then I've also got spray bottle here So 
So some people have fancy terrarium tools. I don't. Now you might be worried about how much water I'm adding. What I'm going to do later is I might have to leave the cap off of this for a few days to kind of let it dry out and get the water level just right up. looking pretty good. Oh, we got a little critter crawling around in there. <laughs> okay. Uh, I thought about making like a little hill with this extra moss. I don't think that's going to be necessary. But I am going to add these stones in. Kind of make some little miniature landscape. And also kind of hide the scene where I use multiple pieces of moss. Oh, and then we also have our little log here. Today I'm here at our Belpre store, and as I mentioned earlier in the video, I didn't have any terrarium tools, but we actually have terrarium tools in stock, along with a whole selection of terrarium supplies. So stop by our Belpre store and check out this great selection of terrarium tools and supplies. And for this and other great information, visit us online at bobsmarket.com. So, it has been a week since I created my little terrarium, and it's actually doing really well. So you can see here that it's really starting to green up, and where I brought it inside and it's warmer, the moss, it's starting to kind of come out of its winter hibernation, and it's really starting to grow. So, this little guy is doing really well. But... I've got another terrarium here that I've had in my office for a much longer time. Uh, in fact, this terrarium, it's about eight years old. And, well, it's due for some maintenance. Um, about once every six months, it has a fern that's growing in it. And every now and then, it needs trimmed back. So I've got a couple cameras set up over here so we can see two different angles. And let me go ahead and jump over to those cameras, and that way we can watch um, how I trim it and kind of how I do maintenance on this terrarium. Because terrariums are really low maintenance, and they don't need maintenance that often. And um, as I'm doing that, if you have any questions or comments, uh, be sure to 
to put them down in the comments. I'm trying to keep an eye on those. Um, my stream, the player over here, crashed a second ago, <laughs> which it didn't affect streaming, but I lost the comments, so I had to kind of reload the page while the video was playing. Um, anyhow, technical issues aside, let's jump into Terraria. All right, so this isn't the best angle of me, but it is the best angle of this. And like I said, this terrarium, it is about eight years old. I had it at my house for a number of years. Um, I'll have to look online, but I think I have a YouTube video of me assembling this terrarium. I can't remember. Um, but I did it for a project uh, for an article here at Bob's a long time ago. And it sat at my house for a while, then it made it in here to the office, and it's been here for about the last eight years. So about every six months I open it up and give it a trim, and other than that, it really just sets over here on my windowsill. Actually, I, I need to dust it. It's got some dust on the lid. So let's go ahead and open it up. And really trimming it is just as simple as taking some scissors and cutting the fern back. Now down inside, we'll hit some brown growth. And yeah, it won't look too hot for a week or two. But it'll really stimulate it to start growing back out again. So I'm kind of doing the side toward the camera first, which, hey, I can spin it. <laughs> um, Donna, she commented and said kids would enjoy doing this project. And yeah, that's kind of what I had in mind with that. Um, you know, something like a big terrarium like this is a little bit more involved. Uh, but creating a little one like that can be a fun experiment. And even if it dies, you're still still learning and, and seeing what's happening with it. And opening up this terrarium in here, it is amazing because it smells just like a forest. Like, if I close my eyes and take a whiff, I mean, I feel like I'm in the woods. That's so cool. And it's kind of weird because every now and then, um, the moss that's growing in here, I collect it out in the woods. And periodically, I'll have little critters show up in this moss eight years later. Um, I'll have pill bugs and stuff hatch out, which is really cool. I mean, that there's still, you know, life like that in here this many years later. And it's pretty well sealed. I mean, the lid doesn't have any sort of plastic seal or anything like that. Um, and it does lose water over time. Um, I have to replenish the water in it. Uh, maybe once every six months or so. About usually when I give it a trim, um, you'll see me here in a second. I'll I'll wash down the sides of it uh, just to kind of clear it up. And I don't know if you can see that on camera, uh, but right in this area, there's actually some moss that's growing up the side of the of the glass. And there's a big old ball of that moss growing right there. It's also interesting over the years that as the moss has grown, the amount of volume 
has sort of decreased because the moss is kind of working down into the soil. And, you know, it's growing out and dying, and then a new layer grows on top of it. But where it's less dense than the soil, I'm actually kind of running out of space. It's, it's kind of growing up like this, uh, which is kind of interesting. I didn't expect that result in the long term. And there's also kind of this, this big hill in the middle, um, which has formed as moss has grown up into the fern over the years. I do see some dryness there, which I'm going to address that momentarily. I do rotate it periodically. As, as I get growth like this, I'll, I'll rotate it in the windowsill, so a different side of it is exposed to the light. But there we go. That looks pretty good. I mean, that, that really opened it up, and you can actually see into it now. It was just a giant green mass before. We don't want to trim all of the green away, because that's really where our new growth is going to come from. And I just love terrariums because they're they're super easy to maintain. And they make a great conversation starter and a great centerpiece. When people come into my office for the first time, like one of the things that they tend to gravitate toward is of course my window sill full of plants. But they'll look at the terrarium and go, wow, that's really cool. And then the next thing they'll look at, and I might grab it and pull it over here in a second, is my aquatic planter, which it needs a lot of maintenance done to it. Um, since I moved into this office, I've kind of had an algae bloom in it, <laughs> which I'm not looking at the camera right now. <laughs> um so yeah, I've been fighting a, an algae problem in my aquatic planter. Um, but you can sort of think of it as an aquarium, or as a terrarium, but for aquatic plants. Uh, of course, it's not sealed like a terrarium. It's open on top, open to the air. But we'll give the glass here a really good clean with some paper towels. I pushed down some of that growth that we had creeping up the side. That'll make it look a little bit better. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I do like starting with nice clean glass. Which, as I showed in the the video where I made the little terrarium, um, we do have a selection of terrarium supplies up at our Belpre store, and a great selection of of terrarium uh, jars. Uh, this jar, I forget exactly where I picked it up, but it's a pretty generic um, apothecary jar. There we go. That looks that looks pretty good. I think it does need a tad bit more water though, so I'm just going to I'm just going to open up my spray bottle here and just pour some in. There we go. And that may have been too much. Um, with a terrarium, it is easy to overwater them. So that's, that's one of the issues with a terrarium is moisture management and kind of maintaining the proper moisture level. I'll give you a spin to look at it. That's the side that I have facing the window. You can see how green it is. This is the side that I have facing away from the window. So 
what I'm going to do is when I set it back in the window, I will put this side facing. And then set this side so it's facing in. And that will kind of let the growth even out. Um, but yeah, moisture is one of those things that's kind of hard to regulate in a terrarium. So with this, it's easy because, let me find the jar lid here and give it a little dusting. There we go. I could take this jar lid and kind of set it at an angle. So I can kind of set it like that. And if I do that for a few days, it'll kind of let the, uh, let the moisture level kind of equalize. And then I'll go ahead and close up, um, which I'll start with it closed and see how much moisture I get inside. And then I'll probably crack it open for a little while and then close it and crack it and kind of work its way back and forth until I feel that it's kind of at the right level. So you always have to kind of monitor those. And the same way with this, even though it's a little tiny jar, you know, the lid just unscrews. And I can pop it open and set it off to the side like that. But yeah, I recommend I recommend grabbing some supplies and experimenting with terrariums. They're really easy to get started with. I mean, you can take something that would have been trash and turn it into a Beautiful little planter like this that looks great setting on a windowsill. I mean, this, other than the cost of the rocks, which was like three bucks, I think, um, I ended up with a great little planter. So, yeah, go out, experiment, and build your own little terrarium. And if you have success with it, share the pictures and your story with me. It might just end up on our blog or in a video or something like that. So, well, that is all that I have for this week. Um, next Tuesday, um, as Grandma used to say, Lord willing, the creeks don't rise, we'll be doing this next Tuesday at 5 p.m. Oh, and before I go, um, remember that you can head over to our website at bobsmarket.com to register for a prize. So right now at the top of the screen, there'll be a little bar that pops up, and we're doing a drawing every month uh, throughout this year to celebrate 50 years of Bob's Market. So you can head over there and sign up for a door prize. Or Well, I guess it's not really a door prize. Um, <laughs> you can sign up for our monthly drawing. And, uh, well, until next time, keep growing. You're still watching? I'm done! Well, since you're still here, head over to bobsmarket.com and check out our website. We've got some really cool stuff over there, like the Keep Growing podcast. And if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe, smash that notification bell, and all that stuff, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye!